Welcome to Power Charting. I am your host, Bruce Frazier. And very exciting times in the market. The Fed made uh, interest rate decision announcements yesterday. Market is responding bullishly from that. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then we will get right into finding leadership. We're going to use Semiconductor Industry Group as our case study analysis. And uh, we uh, really like some of the things that are happening in that group and many others at this time. So uh, the, uh, but to start, let's go to, read that right before bed, it'll help you go to sleep. And then uh, here, a great question from one of our uh, community about analogs and was very intrigued with the fact that this 2002-3 analog using the Dow Industrials was compared to the S&P 500. It was curious to know if you can compare different instruments to each other, such as two different indexes. Absolutely. We are in charting, looking at the unfolding behavior of mass psychology among investors in chart patterns. So anytime you're looking at a chart pattern, you're effectively looking at an analog. So head and shoulders top. You're looking at some idealized example of a head and shoulders top and comparing it to an instrument that you're currently studying. So uh, that is a form of an analog. And uh, here in this case, we were comparing the accumulation structure of 2002-3 uh, in the Dow Jones to the way that the S&P 500 has been setting up in 22 and 23. And uh, we numbered these. You can see here, uh, there are devi deviations or variances in the way this is unfolding, but you can see uh, climactic low at one, rally uh, in an upthrusting action into two, 0.4 is a lower high, 0.3 actually is a secondary test with a slight undercutting of the climax at one, which proves to be good support. And uh, so now 0.5, and then we made the case that 0.6 would be uh, important next leg or a next event up. Now look at the distinctions because part of looking at analog studies is to look for what is alike, but what are the deviations? And so note the rally from five to six back in 20, uh, 20, 2003 was a uh, diminishing thrust, uh, slowing advance, weakening as it was going up, making a lower high, and this proved to be a final high. But in fact, the uh, different situation occurred. There was a sharp break initially uh, in 22 in December, then a low into the end of the year, and then a, a ra good rally phase to start the rally, as was the case at, from five to six prior but then continuation with just an ability to be able to just keep pushing up much better rally in the second half up to six and it took out 0.4. So inherently a stronger rally occurred. This is a distinction, a variation between then and now. That's what we do with analogs. This is something that Wyckoff was really, really good at and he didn't have relative strength analysis. So he was always looking at waves. Waves of, waves of advance or waves of decline, comparing and contrasting, looking for relative strength characteristics in those times many years ago. And so uh, something different is occurring now, and we will talk a little bit more about that. The Fed met, uh, so anyway, good question on analogs uh, worth uh, discussing. And then here, CPI, uh, the, I pointed out, uh, uh, it's kind of mid-year, second half of the year, I pointed out that inflation was slowing. CPI index started to really flatten out in the second half of the year. Well, we were looking at, and we just study price. We, I'm not a Fed watcher. I don't try to figure out what's in their head. I'm just looking at what prices are doing. You see the U.S. Treasury two-year topping out at 4.7. It starts to go down. Well, at the same time or in a similar period, you can see that the CPI was flattening out. So the two-year really uh, is making a vote about what it sees happening with inflation and interest rates started to fall. 
we took a point figure count of that structure, got a count that went down to like mm, 410 to 390, showed you those charts in the past. And so now we're just hovering right around four. So the two year was really voting and saying that there was a, uh, uh, a slowdown in inflation coming, maybe a slowdown in the economy and it was causing uh, interest rates to fall. So note in November and December on this data that we're actually getting down ticks in the uh, CPI index. Whether that can happen in the future is uh, anybody's guess, but the trend is now uh, uh, slightly falling. And if this can continue, the Fed, which made um, um, more, uh, call it dovish, I guess, but they raised a quarter yesterday, but also they seem to indicate that the trajectory of rate rises would continue, but at a lesser rate, lesser pace. And they're really watching this data in my view. And uh, so I think this is what the bond market's been reacting to, why the bond market has been rallying nicely in the last number of months. And also I think it's why the Fed is going to st soften uh, their position and uh, their interest rate. And this is, I think, what's helping the stock market to have a more important rally as we go forward. Okay, so enough on that. Uh, I had uh, next week, I'll show you some point and figure charts. Probably the most important thing I could show you right now uh, would be this uh, chart here, which shows the, uh, we, we were looking at this, a lot of things have happened very quickly in January into February, but we were looking for a break in the NASDAQ 100 above this downtrending supply line. It broke that, went up to the 200, broken through that only spent a couple of days on the 200. It's working through overhead supply. This is what this green shading is about, is there's a lot of overhead supply in here. And what we really wanna see is a good acceleration of this rally before a pause, and then a pause, not any kind of a, a return back into the structure. This now starts to look more like accumulation and uh, doesn't even look complete yet. But this is very constructive and we're accelerating, which means there could be an element of climactic behavior now as we go into point and figure count areas. And we'll look more at those next week. <clears throat> but anyway, you can see here that this climactic behavior could go on for a period of time. It'd be great to see it get above the peak here set in August before it has any kind of a rest. But uh, we uh, will just have to watch and see what happens. And also I just point out here, I put this point in figure count, uh, don't have the chart to show you, but 11.2 to 11.4 and look at how it really picked up the climactic low and also tended to be the place where the lows are more or less holding is right in this 11.2 area. Couple of pushes below, but it can't stay below. So uh, classic behavior. Okay, let's move on to our topic for the day. We have talked about this form of scanning in the past because it's really a technique that I've been using for gosh, I don't know, decades. And it's the way that I process uh, the market for leadership how I organize the market going from sectors, really indexes to sectors, to industry groups, to stocks. And I'm looking for emerging leadership. I want to show you this very simple tool. We've talked about it before. I talked about it at ChartCon and looked at the industrial sector. Today, we're going to look at semiconductors. But initially, I want to show you here the uh, scan that I use. Now, you see a lot of stuff here, but it's really quite simple. These two lines at line 15, 16, and 18 are the scan itself. Up here, we have the different uh, categories of sectors uh, that I will be scanning on. And the slashes up here are uh, comment out that particular sector so that it doesn't scan. So it just makes it a comment. And uh, if I want to activate it and scan on it, all I have to do, put my cursor in and go in here and 
backspace this out, make it groups of cyclical, and uh, now this is an active group. And then I would comment out uh, the industry groups. But now what I did is I actually did a scan on the industry groups because I want to show you that this is the first cut that I do really is uh, I look at the industry groups, which is for all sectors and um, look, look for them in order of leadership. Let's talk a minute about this scan. What we are in line 15, what we are asking for is that the uh, stock in this group is above its 39 week moving average. Price is above the 39. That, it's that simple. So all you're doing is you're asking for the weekly close to be above the weekly close of the 39 week moving average, period. The next line is asking that the 39 week moving average be ticking upward. It's an upward trend. <clears throat> now, this is important because this is our definition of an uptrend. Rising price above a rising moving average. 39 weeks is a long-term moving average. It takes a lot to turn a 39-week moving average up. But once you have that up, now you have the conditions for trend. So we are asking that three that uh, in this particular line, that current the current 39-week moving average is above three weeks ago. So that would define there being an uptrend in the 39 week. Now we also want the same condition for relative strength, but to simplify things, what we do is we're actually just gonna rank on scooter. And so the next line, line 18 is ranked by scooter. Scooter is a great tool, it's a great index. Every instrument in, well, most every instrument in the stock charts uh, universe is ranked by scooter, has a scooter rank. So we rank by scooter strongest to weakest. And the uh, only stocks that we want to, or industry groups, et cetera, that we want to focus on are the ones that are above a rising 39 of their price and above a rising 39 of their relative strength. Now, scooter gives us an approximation for that. So the, the logic here is quite simple. And that is, is that we have to have the condition of being price being above a rising 39 as a precondition for anything. So now if we rank by scooter, we're generally only going to see the scooters that are also showing us that the relative strength is rising too. So let's uh, have a look. And uh, I've run this scan for you so that you can see the, uh, this is the industry groups. And here they are. And you can see that there's about 100, a little over 100 industry groups, only 51 of them right now meet our criteria. And this is the lowest. Currently, biotech is only a 16 on the scooter rank, and uh, which is quite low. And the uh, these other uh, industry groups are in order of their relative momentum, which is a great indicator. Uh, Auto Parts here has a scooter of 83. And uh, uh, marine transport publishing, so you can see them. The very top, the winner right now is renewable energy equipment, and uh, that is right at the top. I think Enphase is the in, really important stock in that group, but there are others also. Number two, steel, very interesting. So steel is, has a ninety-eight point nine scooter rank, and uh, is in a strong upward momentum trend. All right, so uh, let's now turn to, I just picked one out. This has a scooter of 69. This is home improvement retailers. So this would be uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, et cetera. And uh, look at our conditions being met. Here we can see over here uh, that the moving average is definitely upticking. Price is above an upticking moving average, 39. and the uh, price has formed what appears to be an accumulation type structure. The, uh, the reaction after getting above the moving average has been quiet, dull, and sideways. This is a very constructive. It's not pulling back, it's consolidating, which shows that these stocks might be near the completion of accumulation. 
And then also you can see that the relative strength, which tends to be more volatile, is above its uh, rising 39 and uh, has had a good pullback on relative strength starting to turn up again. We look for the conditions of confirmation that price is above a rising 39. You can see this back in 2017, actually back to 2016, but also that relative strength is confirming this because relative strength is our confirmation of leadership. If relative strength is rising and price is rising, we have the conditions of leadership. This is a stock that is outperforming the market. This is an industry group that's outperforming the market. Very important. Now, let's turn our attention. Let's keep going here. Let's look at, in this case, here's semiconductors. So here's our scan workbench <clears throat> note. Uh, and I'll show you a little trick here. I also have the S&P 500 up here. I like to look at those. Here's the industry group list. They're all commented out. They won't be acted on in the scan. The only group in here, and this is an industry group. Everything else is a sector or an index. This is the only industry group in here. And it's blue, which means that it's active. It's not commented out. The way that we put this group in here is we went down to the uh, uh, scan workbench and we went to sectors and industries. And here's all the sectors and caps, but we go down to technology. Technology is in here and we go to semiconductors, click on this and then add it with this button. And now this will be, and it'll be written in the form it needs to be in to be scannable. And now we have groups in here. We can just remove this uh, after we're done, leave all the other sectors in and just run this one. So we don't have to write new scans. We can if we want, but we can just literally plug this in and run it. And so that's exactly what we've done for today. And so here is semiconductors, here's our list. And you can see they're in order rank of scooter, which is this column here, all semiconductor industry stocks. There's about 91, 92 stocks in this uh, industry group. Only 51 meet our criteria. So we're seeing the uh, most important uptrends. Everything else is in some sort of, a, some form of a not of an uptrend of our uh, preference. Okay, so now we can see here are some names. These are the strongest. And let's just go in. And so here is uh, the group. Let's go to the top. Here are the groups uh, in order of scooter, uh, 10 per page. And we can just go through and we can scan right through. Now look at this uh, AEHR test systems and note how far away the stock is from its rising 39. Notice how long it's been going up. It's been going up since about September, October of, I mean, it's been going up before that, but it's been above the moving average. Relative strength is up, price is up. This is leadership and leadership tends to persist. This stock is absolutely reflecting that because it's the strongest stock in the semiconductor sector. Okay, industry group. Here's another one. Again, they're ranked by strength of scooter. And uh, this one, uh, Excellus Technologies, is uh, formed a reaccumulation structure here. And pause, look at this pause at resistance up here. You can go into a daily chart and really study this, but note, note, note that the relative strength has been rising really since uh, the end of 2020. So in gear up on relative strength, in gear up on price and it's just persisted 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 at a really good reaccumulation in 2022 and is now marking up again this is exactly what we're looking for even if you're a trader a short term trader you want to trade you want to focus on stocks that have got persistent leadership this scan can get that information for you so that you can see best candidates for your campaigning purposes. Now, some of these are in this case, in this case, you can see that the market cap, 1.14 uh, billion smaller company, uh, Adia, and big jump, 
and now it's consolidating its jump. Can it continue? Uh, I tend to believe I like the way it's pausing here after a very important jump. I do not know the reason for that. And so here is Allegro and Allegro Microsystems note the jump up here and then the persistency of the momentum as this stock is going higher. One of the really strong stocks and look, this whole area back to going public pretty much is a reaccumulation preparation for another advance. So uh, again, how you uh, choose to um, uh, interact with these really strong momentum stocks is really a personal decision. I leave that up to you, but what I want to do now, I've shown you some of the really strong ones, but let's get down here into uh, the uh, scooter ranks that are a little lower. Here's Click, Kulik, and Sofa, and you can see the accumulation type structure after declining in 21. Look at this mid year 21, it starts to top out in a downtrend. Well, just now, if we look over here, we see that there's upticking 39, upticking 39 on relative strength above in both cases. Acceleration is starting to occur and it's coming out of an accumulation type structure. May need a backup or a pause here. Dull and quiet would be best, but this has uh, definitely the look of potential accumulation. And uh, here, so that we would call this emerging potential leadership. And uh, so these are stocks that once they get going, they can go for a couple of years. And uh, so in this case, uh, this is uh, Kohu. And here, note the accumulation style structure. It has a rally up to resistance, pulls back, backs up to a rising 39. Relative strength is confirmed up. We would expect that this is a condition that can continue and that this might be very early in an ongoing uptrend. So this is what we are trading for. And we just set stops at the appropriate places to protect capital. Uh, LAM research, re accumulation, cyclic accumulation type structure, relative strength is now confirming. We don't want to be in these stocks when relative strength is down because uh, the institutions are avoiding relative strength weakness and they are uh, pursuing relative strength. As you can see, look, here's about the area where you got above the 39 on price you got above the 39 on relative strength. And this condition continued from early 2019 all the way up to the point at which price turned down above a rising 39 and relative strength was already down was mid 2021. So this is over two years. So these are the conditions that we seek for leadership. Now, sometimes they don't last as long. This may be aborted. That's why we're risk managers. So we're really uh, careful about this. And you might just be trading these stocks completely up to you. So uh, here, another accumulation structure. This is NXPI. Relative strength is now getting in gear. Been out of gear for more than a year. Out of gear. So uh, anyway, uh, and you can do this with all industry groups. I'm just showing you semiconductors. Actually, the semiconductor group itself the actual index of the semiconductor group is not yet on a confirmed buy. But let me give you this logic because we only have a couple of minutes left. And that is when you see an industry group that is really close to turning up, you want to go into the individual components, look for leadership, look for the big cap stocks, look for the institutional favorites, but go into that group just the way I showed you here and identify the leadership names and look to see whether or not leadership is already starting to confirm uptrends. Because you know that there are certain stocks that are going to need to confirm uptrends to pull up the index itself for that industry group. So there's always going to be leadership. Focus on the leadership. And so that's one thing I like to do is I like to look for industry groups that are on the verge, on the cusp, of changing from down to up or up to down, depending on your, uh, you know, how you like to trade. In my case, I like to trade uh, the uptrends, but look for that uh, 
that inflection point. And you'll see it, it'll be weeks ahead of time. It'll start to show up. And then from that, go in and identify what's already leading the way up. Like the, like A, AEHR, AHER Systems, was leading for a long time prior to the semiconductors. And there's no reason you can't trade good leadership that was a fantastic stock to be trading, even though the group itself was not yet up. But again, uh, personal preference item. Uh, in the future, I will talk about these rates of change. I've talked a little bit about this previously, but rate of change on price, rate of change on relative strength. We'll do more on this. I hope you found this interesting, helpful, useful. Plug that scan in and use it and become familiar with it, and it'll serve you well. And with that, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Take care.